Hey guys, Ali here. How are you doing? Welcome back to A Layman's Insight and another episode of Disco Elysium. Gonna do some exploring of the island now. A firing slit you can't see inside. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can find some fuel um, for the generator inside. I'm not gonna wear that. That's just not gonna happen. Yeah, find fuel for the generator. Because if I can find fuel for the generator, I can probably then open the door. It must have taken a direct hit to take out such a huge chunk. Yeah, this place has been bombed to hell and back, probably. Oh. The distant sound of cargo ships. Signal horns echo on the water. Let's see here. Is that an anchor? The winch is broken. Rust has eaten through what remains of the chain. A strange feeling looking at the water. Maybe you should just wander off into the sea. Leave it all and walk in. Hmm. With a bottle in your hand. Why? Yes. Oops. Cold and still. Um, no, 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 no. Like the inside of her mouth. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. No, no. We're not starting with that. Not now. Not this time. This thought is over. Shake your head. I don't want birds. The game is trying to get the worst out of me when I'm trying to be my best. Oh. The pain in your pelvis makes you wince. Then you continue. The inside of the fortress. You make out the console and the blast door. All right. What's here? Can I... Is there any thoughts up here? Oh yeah, there is. No way to jump down here without breaking a few bones. Okay, let's do it the normal way then. Using the door. Oh. The depot that supplied this chain is long gone from the coast. What have we got here? A weathered artillery map showing coordinates to the Bay of Revishol. In the Bay of Revishol. An old medicine cabinet, newly stocked with Draomine. Oh, could this be the fuel I'm looking for? LUM fuel canister. I have a canister, but I don't have the fuel. Okay. Drugs, money. Okay. Another bed. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab. Only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures. Firing slits like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. Hmm. Inspect the mattress. A single person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. Ooh. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the brim with cigarette butts. Pick one out of the can. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand, Tio Moteri. Tio Moteri, like the ones we found in Land's End, remember? I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't important. This means the same person could have visited both locations. Mm. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. Let's inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you. Like a little window. Let's touch the concrete. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. 
Look through the hole in the concrete. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation. A tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. Mm. One kilometer across the water. The ruins look familiar. On the left? A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire. Capeside apartments. Rue de Saint Gislaine, 33A and 33B. And on the right? The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de Saint Gislaine, 10. The doomed commercial area. And between the two? The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. You see a small fleck of white on the rooftop. The upstairs window of Clasia's room. In the rain, reflecting light. There it is. Do you have a line of sight to the window? More than that. Yes, there's an opening between 33A and 10. I can see to the roof. I can see it. Through the scope of a rifle, the shooter would be prone, lying on a mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Mm-hmm. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger, on a calm day like this. Kim, I could make it. I could make the shot. Good. I think we have it, Detective. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Okay. Affirmative. Why didn't we come here before? Why? We don't go everywhere in the thousand meter radius of the crime scene. That's not procedure. Oh, you're right. He looks north over the fortification, then at the mattress. He's conflicted for a second. There's guilt there. It takes him a moment to rationalize it away. Could the shooter still be here? Where? On this island. He does not answer. Just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says, He feels uncomfortable suddenly. We should move now. Okay. I'm going to put something into my skills, though. Uh, let's see here. Conceptualization. Mm, or pain threshold. Yeah, pain threshold. I kind of feel like I just wasted that one, actually. Hopefully it won't kick me in the nuts too bad. All right. We find the sniper's lair. We just don't know who the sniper is yet. Oh. You feel eyes on your back. Someone's watching, but you can't say where. Hmm. I guess we're going to go back inside. I, I don't want to steal the fuel from that lady's boat. Well, for two reasons. One, how are we going to get back? And uh, two, I said that I'd be frugal <laughs> about it. But of course, Kim doesn't want to go back to the mainland to get the fuel from his car, so... I don't think I have a choice. That's, that's annoying. But at least I have the, uh, like, the jerry can, or the, you know, the fuel canister. So I guess I can use that to go out to the boat and siphon the fuel. Nope. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, is it this way? Yeah, I want to go through that door. Okay, cool. Just let the game root me.
You know what? The emptiest buildings are all always seem to be kind of big, right? The bigger the building with nobody in it, the more empty it feels. I mean, obviously it's empty as far as people, but it just feels all the more wrong. <laughs> ICM. This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what is the ICM? Insulindian citizens militia. Oh. It's the official name of the Commune Arts Army. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM. It sounds like RCM. Revishal citizen militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachol West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. Nice political. Uh, in the same sentence. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you pant. What I'm hearing is we descend from the glorious revolutionary army. It's a little embarrassing in 51, no? Maybe we need to rebrand? Yeah. No one remembers the ICM. The connotation is less important each year. He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star? No. An upside down star. Oh. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. Okay. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. Looks old. What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Freighter. Okay. Double. Double. Come on, get the rank right. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. Yeah. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets. Guns, fuel. Finish the thought. All right. Hey, what's that? Okay. Why oh, didn't I didn't check this out? What's this? A barrel is run empty. There's almost nothing inside. No wait. No, hold on. I did. I did look at that. I think it's because we picked up the jerry can. That's what it is. Where's the boat? There's the boat. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Uh, yeah, let's return to the mainland. Wait, leave. If I equip the jerry can, this here, what's that? Oh, yeah. If I equip that, can I equip that? I don't think I can equip that. Okay. Hold on. Is this an empty jerry can? Oh, it still has fuel in it. Oh, my God. Why are we not in the building, then? I'm so silly. Get back in the building. Run. Run to the building. It's cold outside. There we go. <laughs> I'm so dumb. I can't believe I didn't see that. Okay. I think I'm going to take it to... Hmm... Up here, oops. Can I pour it in here? This old cylindrical ah. generator waits with its fuel cap open. Here we go. Makeshift electrical wiring runs out of its side and across the floor. Pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell. Mm. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Let's pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse, settling down to a rattle. 
That should do it. All right. Perfect. This old. What we'll do then is we need to go back downstairs, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to use the panel to turn the lights on and open the door. All right. I hope I can choose to do both of those. I want to see the lights come on. The door will open. I know how doors open, but lights come on. I want to see how pretty it can look. Make this place look. A dim golden glow animates the console. Faint, like a ghost light. Eugène Auvert reads one dial key. Allume reads another. All right. On. Turn emergency open. Automatic boot. Let's, let's put the lights on. The lighting in the room turns Ooh. on with a sizzle. A dim Ooh. ambient orange. Very nice. Turn emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. All right. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. After you. Before, outside, when we were walking across the sand, I felt someone watching me. So did I. Not back there, but I felt it since we came here. Mm, what's there? I don't know. I mean, either. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. I'm scared. Don't be. I have a gun. He takes out his sidearm, checks the barrel, then holsters it again. Oh, I also have a gun. No, it was not easy to acquire. Well, okay, let's go. God damn it, such a party pooper. <laughs> All right. Gonna set a little quick save here. Oh boy. Oh boy. <gasps> Let's head outside, I think, or wherever this cavern takes us. By the signs of things, it's outside. We're gonna get wet. Gosh darn it. Oh, didn't mean to run there. Is that a tire? Like a flat tire tube or something? Oh, what's this? Small white flowers blossom all around you. A rubber dinghy is deflated. Broken. I forgot that dinghies were a thing. Hey, there's a guy with a rifle. An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. The deserter, okay. Then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. Oh, okay, for an old man, that's not bad. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. Are you the fire guy? The what now? I can't hear you. Did you recently tell two kids to put out their fire? Two twins? I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. The position? Sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown up. <laughs> they're twins and they're about five. Come on, man. You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. <laughs> a shudder of disgust passes his left side. His right side remains motionless. Did you close the blast door? I did. 
And you opened it. How? I fuel the generator, then use the console. I should have burned that console down. He shakes his head. How did you know I was coming? The boat engine. Oh. And the water. Mm, nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Okay, I know this guy has an Australian accent. But just the words, the dialogue. If this was a movie, Michael Gambon has to play this guy. Just saying. Hmm, is that a Bell McGrav? It's a Triangong 446. Oh. A Samaran rifle. How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao Commune. Military aid. He pats the rifle. If that stay true to him, he can still make it sing. The Sinyao Commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from the board. His gaze turns inwards. Hmm. I'm not going to brag about my gun. I need to put... I need you to put down the gun so we can talk further with the police. I'm with the police so you can keep the gun, but keep it down. Not one move. Oh, which one of these would I choose? Or maybe this will get him to put down his gun. Yeah, okay, your weapon stayed true to you. Mine has stayed true to, to, uh, stayed true to me. Yes. I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. Yeah, if Michael Gambon has... He would have to play this guy. He'd be perfect. It's a small role for such a legend of the screen and stage, but... Man, what a great little part it would be. I, th I don't think I can think of anybody who would pull it off better. Have you come to make me one of them? His grip on the rifle tightens. His left eye twitches. With what? Fear? Rage? We have come to ask you questions. Nothing more. The lieutenant puts his hand on his holster. If you do not comply, we will take you in. Do you understand? Another spitball lands in the ashes. That's all the answer he gives. The danger levels here are hard to read. One moment he's a fire, the next a fire gone out. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with option eight. I'm with the police. You can keep the gun, but keep it down. Not one move. No. What? The lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head and says, Put it down now, sir. Oh. Or you're going to blow my brains out. Before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. <laughs> okay, so the gun doesn't work. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down, carelessly. Then looks at it lying there. Like an amputated limb in the sand. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pick up the gun. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing burnt into the wood. Triangong, 4.46 millimeter, made in Sinyao. It's as he said. It's a triangong made in Sin Yao. Warren. Personalized even. Looks like this weapon has seen a lot of views, hasn't it, sir? No response from the old man. The plastic cape around his shoulders rustles in a small bout of wind. This uses jacketed ammunition. 4.46. Jacketed. Military grade ammunition. Stable in flight. Good for hitting something that's very, very far away. He says, mostly to the man. As he speaks, he stresses every word. He's liking this. Uh, I didn't want to take the gun from the guy. I, I kind of wanted to give him back. Maybe I'm a bit too trusting. Stole the gun. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. 
Some kind of involuntary response? Something is slightly off with his motorex. Yeah. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession. In time. Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. The Commune of Revachol? Do you mean DICM? You're a holdover from the... Hmm. From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia. The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the Ecole de Control Orion. And consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained. Brainwashed. I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. You've been on this island for 43 years. No. Oh. I've been on other islands, too. Oh. I was in Resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years? No, I'm not going to say that, because he just told me I'm wrong. You said you deserted your unit. I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. <sighs> a second is all it took. Interestingly though, there's a Sean Bean vibe in the voice as well. I still think Michael Gambon would pull off the character better, but that voice has a Sean Bean quality. I, I don't think it's Sean Bean in this game, but... Uh, but yeah, for what? A reaction to take hold. What's reaction? Petty bourgeois terror. It's in all men. Hmm. And when was this exactly? May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic? The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. He gestures towards it. Huddled on the floor. The artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon. But I knew. I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. He looks east. A terrible shame, still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame 
and smallness of what he became. You didn't go to the map room. No. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. He looks at the sky. Airships, multi-rotor airships used in the landing. Airships? Aerostatics. The landing had started. I climbed out into hell. There were ships all above, hissing, whirling, and men pouring out. The chain was submerged, so I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too, shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. Huh. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know. It's scared of everyone. That the bourgeois are not human. Huh. I've always suspected the same. Now is not the time, Lieutenant Yefreto. Yeah, it is. I had to. I had to fight it. I could not stop anymore. The old man falls silent. His black eyes keep piercing your skin as he looks to some great distance behind you, shaking his head slowly, retreating from it. What is this place, this island? It's not an island, Dwat. It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. You mean the landing? Retaking of Revachol? Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. First, I'm not one of them. Sure you are. You're our CM. Answer me. Who calls an operation against 50 million people death blow? Murderers. I just know what you mean. You don't know. Oh. You haven't seen it. Iblis. Iblis? The black eyed angel. How have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. What do you steal? Supplies. Vegetables. I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. <coughs> How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. Per guy. He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. 
I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. You also have two of me. Hmm. How have you coped mentally? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... His eyes roll into his skull and back. I don't even know what. Inferno? I notice the lieutenant is about to say something. I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult mentally to live in isolation. I'll bet. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins glimmering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes. His face parts from the sun and wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? How have you concealed yourself all of these years? It was hard in the tens. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had mass off coursing through their veins. And others too. Some cordons of Revachol was still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too, they'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. Uh, there's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. The weapons cache under St. Gislaine 22B. In the basement. Have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Belma Graves, right? They were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Ammo scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. Hmm. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. Why don't you just walk there? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs. 
rabbits and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. Hmm. He does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting, drinking, laughing. One more question. Do you smoke uh, Chiamatiri cigarettes? I do. <coughs> Ever smoke them on the mainland? They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century.